Weird question number one. What should you do if you receive an invoice with a future date? Well, the first thing you want to decide is, is it a typo or is it a supplier playing games or perhaps just an honest mistake? So how are you going to figure that out? You're going to start out by checking to see if the goods have been received and you should have a receiving document for that. If not, you know you're dealing with a supplier who perhaps was a little too eager to invoice or perhaps it was a simple mistake. You always need to approach the vendor as though you think they made an honest mistake, not as though they're trying to get you to pay early, even if that is what you really believe happened. Um, once you determine that the goods have not been received, you can either wait until the invoice date and then recheck to see if the goods have been received, and if they have, pay according to the terms agreed and the date on the invoice, or you can correct the supplier for clarification. If you decide to wait until the invoice date, and when you check, the goods are still not received, then handle it as you would for any invoice but not received situation. If when you check the goods have been received, you have two choices. You can either pay based on the terms of read to and the date on the invoice, or you can contact the supplier for clarification. In all likelihood, the future date on the invoice was a typo or some sort of other mistake. In the vein of maintaining good vendor relations, and not trying to take advantage of the supplier's error, I'd contact them to get a corrected invoice, even though that means paying a little earlier than you would have gotten away with. Why would I do this? There are two reasons for this. The first is it's the right thing to do. Stop groaning. But the second reason, and the second is because someday you may make a mistake. And in fact, if you're anything like me, it's not you may make a mistake, but you will make a mistake. And then you will need them to help you. At that time, you don't want them remembering about that time you took advantage of their, ever, of their error, but rather you want them to remember that you helped them when they made a mistake and you didn't take advantage of them. And if they don't remember, you can always point it out, but hopefully you won't have to. Weird question number two. What should you do with an invoice that has been altered, either by hand or with an attached note? First, it depends upon who altered it and why. There might be extenuating circumstances where you pay it. Like for example, if it was discrepant and it was long past due, and now the supplier is refusing to, is refusing to make future shipments if you don't pay, um, and if they don't ship, your manufacturing plant won't be able to run because this particular supplier provides a key or crucial component of your manufacturing process. Okay, so some really extenuating circumstances that the damage of you trying to get all your ducks in a row would be uh, worse. Uh, if you do, then you want to make sure, if you do go ahead and pay it, you want to make sure that you make comprehensive notes on what happened and include them where anyone can find them in the future because you don't want um, them to come back and say you didn't pay them enough um, at a future date and then you don't remember and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that I'm getting ahead of myself okay okay but generally you should pro politely request a new invoice showing the correct amount due why because if you don't months or even years later Someone from their organization or a third party service provider who they have hired will come back and ask you for the amount you did not pay. By that time, everyone will have forgotten why you short paid. And in fact, the people who agreed to the short payment may not even be there. All that will show are the records that reveal you did not pay what was owed. The correct invoice will provide a clear audit trail and will prevent any future misunderstanding. It actually protects both parties. The key when addressing this, especially if they don't want to produce another invoice, is to be exceedingly polite, but be firm, you need to get a corrected invoice. If you like that we address these oddball questions like this, please hit the like button to let us know. Hitting the button also helps us grow this channel, so a big thank you from me to everyone who does though. Weird question number three. 
Why should we use AI in our accounts payable or our accounting work if it is not always correct? This is a really excellent question, and it was asked by one of AP Now's members at one of our paid webinars. She was wondering why, if we make such a big deal about verifying everything that the AI says, why should she even bother using it? Good question. The answer lies in understand the understanding of exactly what AI can be used for. If you think of it as a search engine such as Google or Explorer, etc., then it's understandable that you would come to this conclusion, but it can do a lot more. Let's first look at it let's first look at its search engine capabilities and then we're going to take it one step further. So, um, you can see that AI can help you and you don't wear in there are situations where you do not have to worry about its inaccuracy. When it gives you the search results, it also gives you the source of those results. So, for example, if you ask it like I recently tried, what is the best automation tool for accounts payable? It not only gives you the answer, but it gives you the source. So if it says ABC company is the best automata automation tool, and then you look for the source of that information, because it'll have it as a footnote, and it says that it was ABC company's website, well, hopefully we'll take, you'll take that information with a grain of salt. But for example, let me tell you, share another example where I think it was a big help. Um, I was recently looking to purchase a turduncan. Um, and for those of you who don't know, that's a duck inside a chicken inside a turkey. I think that's how it goes. Anyway, I'd made a deal with my stepdaughter that I would buy it if she and her husband would cook it. Um, I had come up with some, two sellers, but uh, you know, I got on uh, my on Microsoft Copilot and I looked and it came up with a seller that I hadn't found doing a simple Google search. And what's more, it summarized it all in a nice way without me having to dig through a ton of advertisements to get that information okay so it can help that's just the tip of the iceberg okay um, I also want to share another recent experience so you can get a flavor for using the AI tools but remember this is not only as a search engine and we're going to talk more about what else it can do so when I was putting this talk together um, I thought I'd get a little help from AI because I wanted to have some really weird questions that I could answer for you guys so I asked it for a few really weird accounts payable quests and here's a few that it provided it said if accounts payable had a mascot what would it be and what would its catchphrases be it also came up with if you could invite any historical figure to help you with accounts payable for a day what, who would it be and what tasks would you assign them now those are weird accounts payable questions I'll grant you but it wasn't really what I was looking for um, they were amusing but that's all so I tried rewording my question a few times and it was coming up with things like what would you do with an invoice for unicorn feet but it wasn't a complete flop it did come up with the question about the invoice dated in the future now if you think there would be value in my sharing more of these experiences my personal experiences with, in, with AI in the future episodes let me know in the comments below but as I said it can be a huge help um, especially when it comes to writing so for example if you write a boss an email to your boss and you're not happy with it you simply copy and paste it into the AI tool and ask the AI to rewrite it making it more professional or re rewrite it making it more friendly whatever whatever you're looking for just remember and this is the important just remember that you need to check everything it says you'll probably have to tweak whatever it gives you um, to make sure that it sounds like you okay and again Again, this is the type of thing that we use it for it's not we're not at the point where it can help us with our 1099 so I implore you implore you not to try and use it for that maybe a few in a few years I'll be telling you you can use it for that but not right now um it also can improve your chances of getting called for an interview how copy and paste the job description into the tool and then ask it to compare it to your resume which you can either attach with the tool that they have or copy and paste it in then ask it to review your resume for any shortfalls compared to the job description once the tool tells you where the shortfalls are you can adjust your the resume that you're using to apply for this particular job assuming of course that you have the requisite skill if you think you might be willing to give one of these tools a try but now you don't know where to start 
we've got you covered. You can use the link on the link to how to use Microsoft Copilot or the link to how to use ChatGPT, the free versions of both, which have appeared on your YouTube screen and are in the description. Good luck.